Discovering the Real Jesus Part Discovering the Real Jesus Part 2. Part 3 of 6 Textual Comparisons, 1. Description, How to Get to Get to the Kingdom of God, Some Differences Between the Gospel of Mark and the Gospel of Matthew. Using Matthew as a case in point, we notice that the writers who came after Mark repeatedly changed the storyline, in the following ways. 1. They often inserted the title, Son of God, for Jesus. 2. They often inserted the title, Father, for God. 3. They magnified the miracles of Jesus. 4. They covered up the limitations of Jesus. 5. They called Jesus, Lord. 6. They represented people praying to Jesus. 7. They portrayed Jesus with more knowledge. 8. They blurred the distinction between Jesus and God. To illustrate the type of changes that occurred, I will show how individual episodes in the Gospels of Matthew and Mark are similar and yet significantly different. The differences have been noted by biblical scholars and explained as modifications introduced by Matthew. The greatest commandment, Mark 12 verses 28 to 35, Matthew 22 verses 34 to 40. Mark 12 verses 28 to 35. 28 One of the teachers of the law came and heard them debating. Noticing that Jesus had given them a good answer, he asked him, of all the commandments, which is the most important? 29 Inch the most important one, answered Jesus, is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. 30 Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. 31 The second is this, Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. 32 Inch well said, Teacher, the man replied. You are right in saying that God is one and there is no other but Him. 33 To love Him with all your heart, with all your understanding and with all your strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself is more important than all burnt offerings and sacrifices. 34 When Jesus saw that He had answered wisely, He said to him, You are not far from the kingdom of God. And from then on no one dared ask Him any more questions. Matthew 22 verses 34-40 34 Hearing that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, the Pharisees got together. 35 One of them, an expert in the law, tested him with this question. 36 Inch Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? 37 Jesus replied, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. 38 This is the first and greatest commandment. 39 And the second is like it, love your neighbor as yourself. 40 All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. All quotes are from the New International Version. In Mark's Gospel, a teacher of the law asks Jesus as to what is the greatest commandment. Jesus replied that the greatest commandment was that God is one. Hearing Jesus' response, then man agrees with Jesus, that to believe that God is one is the greatest commandment. Jesus realizes that the man had answered wisely and tells him that he is not far from the kingdom of God. In Matthew, loving God becomes the greatest commandment and no mention of God being one is made. The rich young ruler, Mark 10 verses 17 to 19, Matthew 19 verses 16 to 20. Mark 10 verses 17 to 19. 17 As Jesus started on his way, a man ran up to him and fell on his knees before him. Good teacher, he asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? 18 inch Why do you call me good? Jesus answered. No one is good, except God alone. 19 You know the commandments, do not murder, do not commit adultery, do not steal, do not give false testimony, do not defraud, honor your father and mother. Matthew 19 verses 16 to 20. 16 Now a man came up to Jesus and asked, Teacher, what good thing must I do to get eternal life? 17 inch Why do you ask me about what is good? Jesus replied. There is only one who is good. If you want to enter life, obey the commandments. Eighteen inch Which ones? The man inquired. Jesus replied, Do not murder, do not commit adultery, do not steal, do not give false testimony. 19 Honor your father and mother, and love your neighbor as yourself. Hearing the two together, you do not detect any difference and this is what happens. 
By the time you finish reading Matthew, then Mark and then Luke. One does not remember what he read in which gospel. The reader thinks that all three gospels say exactly the same thing. Yet, when we study them together closely, we realize that the gospel writers were able to use the information to their advantage, to teach the precise point they wanted to preach. In the above passage, the opening exchange between the man and Jesus has been altered by Matthew. In Mark, the man addresses Jesus as, Good teacher. Jesus replies with a mild rebuke, Why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. Once again, Matthew tries to change the passage. First he alters the man's initial question by moving the word, good, from the address and putting it as the object of the sentence. Mark, good teacher, what must I do? Matthew, teacher, what good deed must I do? Finally, embarrassed by the fact that Jesus had reprimanded the man for calling him good, Matthew changes Mark's second sentence. Hence leaving Jesus no chance to refuse that address and protecting him from the implicit suggestion that he was not good. Yet in doing so, Matthew has made his version lack coherency, indicating as though Jesus did not understand the question. Discovering the Real Jesus Part 4 of 6 Textual Comparisons, 2 Description, The Withered Fig Tree and the Sick Women, Some Differences Between the Gospel of Mark and the Gospel of Matthew The Withered Fig Tree, Mark 11 verses 12-25, Matthew 21 verses 12-22 Mark 11 verses 12-25 12 The next day as they were leaving Bethany, Jesus was hungry. 13 Seeing in the distance a fig tree in leaf, he went to find out if it had any fruit. When he reached it, he found nothing but leaves, because it was not the season for figs. 14 Then he said to the tree, May no one ever eat fruit from you again. And his disciples heard him say it. 15 On reaching Jerusalem, Jesus entered the temple area and began driving out those who were buying and selling there. He overturned the tables of the money changers and the benches of those selling doves. 16 And would not allow anyone to carry merchandise through the temple courts. 17 And as he taught them, he said, Is it not written? My house will be called a house of prayer for all nations? But you have made it a den of robbers. 18 The chief priests and the teachers of the law heard this and began looking for a way to kill him, for they feared him, because the whole crowd was amazed at his teaching. 19 When evening came, they went out of the city. The withered fig tree. Twenty inches the morning, as they went along, they saw the fig tree withered from the roots. Twenty-one Peter remembered and said to Jesus, Rabbi, look! The fig tree you cursed has withered. Twenty-two inch have faith in God, Jesus answered. Twenty-three inch I tell you the truth, if anyone says to this mountain, Go, throw yourself into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart but believes that what he says will happen, it will be done for him. 24 Therefore I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it, and it will be yours. 25 And when you stand praying, if you hold anything against anyone, forgive him, so that your Father in heaven may forgive you your sins. Matthew 21 verses 12-22 12 Jesus entered the temple area and drove out all who were buying and selling there. He overturned the tables of the money changers and the benches of those selling doves. 13 inch it is written, he said to them, My house will be called a house of prayer, but you are making it a den of robbers. 14 The blind and the lame came to him at the temple, and he healed them. 15 But when the chief priests and the teachers of the law saw the wonderful things he did and the children shouting in the temple area, Hosanna to the son of David, they were indignant. 16 inch Do you hear what these children are saying? they asked him. Yes, replied Jesus, have you never read? From the lips of children and infants. You have ordained praise? 17 And he left them and went out of the city to Bethany, where he spent the night. The fig tree withers. 18 Early in the morning, as he was on his way back to the city, he was hungry. 19 Seeing a fig tree by the road, he went up to it but found nothing on it except leaves. Then he said to it, May you never bear fruit again. Immediately the tree withered. 20 When the disciples saw this, they were amazed. How did the fig tree wither so quickly, they asked. 21 Jesus replied, I tell you the truth, if you have faith and do not doubt, not only can you do what was done to the fig tree, but also you can say to this mountain, Go, throw yourself into the sea. And it will be done. 22 If you believe, you will receive whatever you ask for in prayer. 
In Mark's version, Jesus seeing in a distance a fig tree went over to looking for fruit. Since it was still not the right season, no food was found on the tree. Jesus after making this understandable human error still curses the good tree. As for Matthew, he deletes the information about it not being the right season, since this would imply that Jesus destroyed a tree for no justifiable reason. Matthew leaves the reader to think that the tree was barren and therefore deserved to be destroyed. Furthermore, in Mark the disciples notice that the tree has withered away the following day. Yet, in Matthew, the tree withers away immediately demonstrating the power of Jesus and the amazement of the disciples. Moreover, Matthew makes other significant changes to the passage, so for example, where Mark mentions, a house of prayer for all nations, Matthew omits, all nation, to satisfy his Jewish readership. Sick woman, Mark 5 verses 24 to 35, Matthew 9 verses 20 to 23. Mark 5 verses 24 to 35. 24 A large crowd followed and pressed around him. 25 And a woman was there who had been subject to bleeding for twelve years. 26 She had suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors and had spent all she had, yet instead of getting better she grew worse. 27 When she heard about Jesus, she came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak. 28 Because she thought, If I just touch his clothes, I will be healed. 29 Immediately her bleeding stopped and she felt in her body that she was freed from her suffering. 30 At once Jesus realized that power had gone out from him. He turned around in the crowd and asked, Who touched my clothes? 31 Inch you see the people crowding against you, his disciples answered, and yet you can ask, Who touched me? 32 But Jesus kept looking around to see who had done it. 33 Then the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell at his feet and, trembling with fear, told him the whole truth. 34 He said to her, Daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace and be freed from your suffering. Matthew 9 verses 20-23 20 Just then a woman who had been subject to bleeding for twelve years came up behind him and touched the edge of his cloak. Twenty-one She said to herself, If I only touch his cloak, I will be healed. Twenty-two Jesus turned and saw her. Take heart, daughter, he said, your faith has healed you. And the woman was healed from that moment. In Mark, the woman touches Jesus' cloak and is cured. Jesus felt the power going out of him and realized that someone had touched him but he did not know where the power went and who had touched him. Whilst the woman was already cured, in Mark, Jesus was still trying to figure out what had happened. In Matthew, Jesus is far more powerful. He immediately knew who touched him and the woman was healed only after Jesus spoke, as if the healing power awaited Jesus' command.